Hello? Yeah? Okay. Sorry, I just brought like everything up here with me. Haha, <laughs> let's study together. Um, so, um, yeah, we've really enjoyed um, going through Thessalonians and trying to prepare uh, what would be a message. Um, and really, uh, to be honest with you, I had to, I had to come up, you know, okay, God, uh, I lost some material and was like, okay, what am I going to do now? <laughs> um, but then um, something that God was reminding me is like, you've been reading this over and over and over and over again. You know what I'm trying to say here. And so, um, so this morning, um, as we look into um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, um, something we hear about Paul's response is before he's really like unsure if the Thessalonians are still following his, his example, God's example, what he was teaching them, he, he was human. <laughs> he was like, Man, I hope they haven't stopped. <laughs> I hope they're continuing running the race, you know? Um, he, um, sorry, I'm using a lot of ums. <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> give me that. Oh, calm down. Um, but what, something that God was pointing out um, and something I also read was a really co cool point and it said that what Paul recognized is that really, Paul did plant that seed with the Thessalonians and the Thessalonians ran with it. They, and what more so is that God was sustaining them even with Paul and Timothy not being there. Um, which also goes, okay, well, then it's not by my power, it's by God's power, by his design, by his strength, that we are able to live and be encouraged. Paul talks about being encouraged. This is one letter, and I'm not saying he doesn't say it in other areas, but one letter where Paul is saying, I am encouraged by what I have heard. This is what I envision. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. I'm going to act out something. <laughs> and so I just imagine, like, Paul's like, oh, man. I'm so worried. I'm so worried. Are they even following them? But his heart is like, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ so much that I'm praying for them fervently that they're following God. They're following him. And he, here comes in Timothy. And he's like, <sighs> <sighs> with a big grin. You can't see it because we got mask on. But with a big grin. And he's like, I have some really great news to share with you. And Paul's like, lay it on me. And he's like, they're still following you, well, following God. He's fo they're following our example. What we taught them wasn't just something that went in their ear and out the other. They decided to absorb, to believe faithfully, 100%. Even with everything going around, that all the persecution, executions, we have no idea the depths of trials they experienced. And they were still fervently following our Jesus, our same Jesus, <laughs> our same God. And um, for me, that's really moving. <laughs> like, Paul is moved to say he is encouraged, but also he's like, now we are living. Like, how does that define the word to live then? You know, when we hear churches and Honestly, this is a testimony. Thessalonians is one testimony. It's a testament of God's glory, his, his faithfulness to his people. And Israel is <laughs> beforehand, this is what he had designed. This is what he wanted. This is, was his hope. As the body of Christ, as this church, this church too, we are called together to be a testament of God's glory. Like, we are <laughs> um, something, also, I, I read some really cool, like, you know, people say some things just so wonderfully, and it's like, well, I just need to repeat that. Um, so 
uh, one thing they were referring to is in Exodus 19 and just talking about the Israelites, and it was like Israel was meant to, is meant to faithfully represent God by how they live as a community of love, justice, and worship of Yahweh alone. And I, I, this is our purpose. This is their purpose. We have been, as, um, as Jennifer was talking about last week, you know, we are, we are chosen people. <laughs> we, we are his new creation. And we are, we are in this body <laughs> of believers. We trying to define community and trying to find, this is our family. I don't, I don't know if you've had bad experiences with family. And I'm going to tell you, we're still imperfect. But this is our family. <laughs> um, I... Oh, sorry. Um, we so we see and we hear that the Thessalonians um, are experiencing these trials of persecution. What does trials bring? Like, what is it produce? And we hear James see, say it in in the Bible as well. He says it produces steadfastness. Well, what is that? It requires us something from us. It requires us to have a response. What is steadfastness? How are we experiencing endurance today? And not in just... A, it's, that's, a really, that's a question for you guys to have for yourself. Is like, what am I having to endure for the sake of my faith in God? Like, to to fully give him everything that I have and sacrifice everything so that I can have this relationship with God. Um, yeah. The Thessalonians and Paul show us what it looks like when someone hears of brothers and sisters standing firm in their faith and what encouragement and joy that brings for the entire body. This brings life. It breathes life into our very bones. That's what life is. Like God's word, if we truly believe is a word of God, then the things that he's also doing in our brothers and sisters is also a word from God, is an example of what he's doing, and it's a declaration of what he's doing. It's a, it's a way we can worship our God. Um, so really, like that's kind of something that I've been thinking about is a testimony. How many people here, if you look around, the people in front of you and behind you, beside you, do you know their names? Do, do you know their story? Do you know how they came to Christ? Do you know the battles they fight every day? Do you know the things that God has done? And and just the glory that he has done through them, has shown his glory through them. I, um, I'm trying not to make this about me, so, but I want to say, I, um, growing up, I've grown up in the church all my life. Um, I can't tell you how many times <laughs> that it's like, oh, you share your testimony, and it's like, oh, you know, it's not really like anything exciting. I mean, I've always fo followed God, you know, and da 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 So I wasn't really confident in sharing my testimony. <laughs> like, not really, because I was like, well, nothing dramatic happened. <laughs> so that was the thought process. Anyway, and so first, I want to say that testimonies individually and as a church, as a group, are very important. Um, they're not silly, um, and they're meant to be shared. Um, second, really, it's not about me, and it's not about my glory. This is a story that God has written, and 
It is meant to not be held just for me. It's meant for other people. Um, third, the meaning or the impact and purpose of the testimony I that God was giving me, I, like, I should have been able to share it without hesitance. And again, a testimony is not just individual. It's this group. It's this, this my family here. The Thessalonians was a family. They are a family. They're still continuing to be a family. They're a family. And they affected, it says the church of Thessalonians, like the other churches were seeing what was happening with the Thessalonian church. I'm going to say that for kind of weird. But they were seeing that as a body, they were doing something very different. Very different from even their churches. What's to say, like, the Church of Thessalonica, Thessalonica, Lo Siento. Um, but just how, how do we be that light in this, in, in Livermore? <laughs> uh, how do we be set apart? We talk about holiness. Basically, we're supposed to be different. And this is not to be discouraging either. I'm not. <laughs> this is not... This is to be like, you know, where is God challenging? Paul says, he says later on, he says, um, I think it's verse uh, 9. Um, oh, okay, it says, yeah, verse 9. So verse 9 and 10. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnest, earnestly night and day that we may see your face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Many times we receive that and we go, oh, somebody's going to tell me what I'm lacking in my faith <laughs> or just in my life? No thanks. Like, how do, how do they know anything about me? You need to invite people into your life to be able to tell you those things. And Paul is saying this is a good thing. They are doing great. They're doing wonderful things. But he recognizes that we're human. We fall short. And we are here to be here together. We're be here to be able to say, hey, yeah, that's not right. Let me help you, like, so you can see. Or, hey, you're in a, in a season of your life what it, where it's really hard. How can I be there? Can I just sit with you? But let me t speak truth. Paul doesn't say, let's pretend we don't have any problems. Um... I hope that feels encouraging. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I recently, well, I think it's about two years ago, I actually was talking with Jay. <laughs> and this is right before we are about to leave to go to um, South America and start in, um, he's telling us about, sorry Jay, I just brought you up, I didn't even ask you. Um, but he's telling us about like what things happen in his life, and I was like, how long have I known you? And how long, why didn't I know this before? Like, you know, just like, um, obviously he's not like, hey, sorry, you guys don't need to go run up to him and be like, what's your story? But just, um, this is what I mean though, like, it's really important to know where we're at. How can I be there for you if I don't know what, like, I understand we're not going to be sharing all the nitty gritty of our lives, but really, I don't know if that's, maybe we're actually supposed to share those nitty gritty things of our lives. I, God calls us to be vulnerable. He calls us to love unconditionally. And I, sorry, I'm not trying to run around here, but I just, we can still love each other, even if I don't know every little <laughs> bit of your life. But I'm just saying as a challenge for us, as I say, I love you. How can I love you better? How can I extend a hand and how can I encourage you? And that is basically what this is. Is like what has been happening with God's word is Paul is demonstrating it. He is encouraged. 
It is life-giving. His word is literally the lamp unto our feet, and, or a lamp uh, and a light unto our path. That is beautiful. His word, we should be encouraged. We should be encouraged in correction. We should, um, and it doesn't mean it's easy, but um, that's what I hear. Um, yeah, so I would say, where is God challenging you in your life? Um, where is God challenging us as a church and not as in the building as followers of Christ and brothers and sisters? Um, your testimony is important. Um, uh, you really don't know how impactful it would be, but it also is not for us. It's going to impact, like, we don't know. We won't usually know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but God is using, he's using your testimony. He's using your life. Again, as an, on an individual scale, but we can't see it. It's on such a bigger scale. We are together. When we talk about being the body, I'm the hand. You're the foot. You're the toe. I, you're the head. Like, we all have different gifts. We have talents. We have things we have to offer to this church. And it's not to be of like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. No, it's because I want to do this. I want to do that. Because we need each other. We need each other when the world is telling us, what is coming against us, really, when it comes against everything and is trying to change everything that we believe or, you know, to be prepared as a body of believers, to be armed with the, the love of God, to be armed with the truth of God. Um, and I just want to say I am so encouraged by our church. I, um, I've seen where we've been in through the pandemic and we went through Zoom and trying to connect and how it was so cool, even for us in South America, how we could connect countries away and be able to be like, oh man, they're still doing it and they're praying for us too. Thank you so much. We need your prayer. <laughs> and um, we are so encouraged by that. We are so encouraged by your love um, for us as well and for our girls. Um, and I want to say thank you. I, I am so, so loved by you guys. And I know that. Um, <laughs> something that I recently saw, and this is just to bring you a little of encouragement and truth is that we watched, I, I went and saw a documentary with a few people, and it's called a documentary, but really it's also just a testimony <laughs> of God's work. And what, something that they said was that we are all called. And that doesn't mean you have to be a quote unquote missionary, like with this title. You are a son and a daughter of Christ. We are all called. We are all called no matter what occupation, whatever we're doing, if we're at home. <laughs> like, we are all called to serve our Lord. We're all called to bring him glory and honor to his name. And again, what, do, what is that? It's, part of that is our testimony. Again, I'm not going to force you guys to like, come and like blab all of it to me. Like, but I want, you, I want this I want there to be a space where it feels like, you know what? I want people to see me. I want people to see who God created and what he did in me, what he transformed in me. Because really, the Thessalonians were transformed. It wasn't by just words. It was by action. They, and, it, and it's not about something to force anybody either. I want to say that. It's not for. They felt so led. They felt so loved and trusted in the Lord so much that they were moved to make a move. Like, they were 
ready. What does it look like for us to just be ready, to be waiting, to not just be stagnant in our faith? Um, it's a challenge, and it's encouragement, and it's all wrapped in, in that. And um, I don't really know how long I've talked because I, <laughs> I did not bring a, a little watch or anything. But um, I do want to say that um, we are doing something new. We're, um, I'm glad you're willing to listen to me. <laughs> um, these are some of the thoughts that have been kind of rolling through my head and things that God has been placing on my heart, and um, God is moving, he's changing, he's changing me, um, and I love you guys. I don't know if anybody has ever really told you, <laughs> like, but I love you, and I really do individually, even if you're new, I love you, okay? <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, I just want to offer for a moment a time to pray, <laughs> to close your eyes. Um, God, I, I love you. We love you. I really don't know what to say, God. I fight between, and maybe there's a few of us too, fighting in between like speaking in English or in another language, in Spanish or Korean or whatever. Lord, we want to offer you everything we have. Um, you are our truth. You are our light, you are our life, and you are a life giver. You sustain us. You make us whole. Um, Dios te amamos y quiero agradecerte, Dios, que estás con nosotros siempre. Um, uh, God, I love you so much. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad to have brothers and sisters in Christ who are ready, who are ready to hear your word, who are still here, even with the pandemic, who who said, yes, I still will follow you, God. It's, it's sometimes so hard, God. I am, um, we thank you. We thank you again for your word. But really, Lord, I just pray over for vulnerability. I pray for, to be vulnerable with you. I pray that you will mend what is broken. I pray that you would show all of us that where we are broken that you will mend that you are our life you are our life giver you are you are truth god you are worthy you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of everything that we do we pray that everything we do would just honor you would glorify you we pray that this would be so beautiful and sweet to your ears we pray that we would hear you, that we would listen to you. Um, God, we pray, we intercede for each one here. We pray that we would just give them into your hands, that you would hold them tight if they need to be held tight 
that you would rub their head like a child, like a mom or dad would do, Lord, that you would be that comfort, that you would also praise and sing and shout with us when we are when we're celebrating something, new life, life again. We have life in you. Breathe in us. Lord, we do. We give you our life. We give you our heart. We give you our soul. I, I, you, Lord, <laughs> you, it's you. It's only for you. And um, we just give this all into your hands, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen.